Jonathan Lee Riches investigates. I am covering the Moscow, Idaho, Brian Kohlberger case. Brian Kohlberger stood silent the other day during his arraignment for his indictment. The judge, Judge John Judge, made a plea of not guilty on his behalf. Now, moving forward, a lot of us been asking, okay, what happens? Well, trial is set for October 2nd. 2023 and a lot of people are like two options here at trial or before trial you plead guilty or you plead not guilty but there's another option that no one is really talking about at all that brian kohlberger could do and that is called an alford plea what is an alford plea you ask an alford plea i'm going to share some information about an alford plea because it could be a very possible scenario regarding a resolution with the Brian Kohlberger case. Check it out. Here is some great information about an Alfred plea in Idaho. Can I plead no contest in Idaho? What is an Alfred plea? Sometimes defendants want to plead guilty and take advantage of an offer by the prosecution, even though they honestly feel that they are not guilty. This usually happens in cases where the prosecution offers a particularly favorable plea settlement and the defendant believes there is a strong likelihood of being convicted at a jury trial. In some states, the defendant has the option of pleading no contest. In other words, the defendant will agree to not contest the case while conceding to serve a particular sentence. Idaho does not accept no contest pleas. Idaho, however, does allow defendants to enter Alford pleas. An Alford plea is a plea where the defendant maintains his innocent but pleads guilty anyway because of the overwhelming evidence against him. When pleading guilty pursuant to an Alford plea, Idaho requires a substantial factual basis for the plea. If there isn't a factual basis for the plea, then the courts will reject the guilty plea, and the defendant's case will continue on to a jury trial. Courts are given wide discretion when it comes to accepting or rejecting Alford pleas. Some judges have their own policies regarding Alford pleas. For example, some judges will not accept an Alford plea unless there is some evidence that the defendant has no recollection of, of what happened. For example, the defendant was too intoxicated to remember what happened. Make no mistake, an Alfred plea is a guilty plea for all intents and purposes. Alfred pleas can often carry with them unintended consequences, so you might want to think twice before you enter an Alfred plea. For example, well, we're not going to read these offenses here. Another negative consequence as I've seen stremming from entering into an Alfred plea is that it tends to convince pre-sentence investigators and ultimately judges into believing that you are not taking responsibility for what you did. This results in stiffer penalties, despite the plea agreement you entered into with the prosecutor. Really, there are few practical positive consequences to entering into an Alfred plea. Rather than a normal guilty plea, most people enter into them because they refuse to admit to something they didn't do. So sense of pride prevents them from doing such a thing. But if you your pride prevents you from admitting to something you didn't do, then why would you take responsibility for something you didn't do? Interesting. Alfred plea. But it also says the judge can ultimately reject that. Even if the prosecution and um, defense come in with an agreement, ultimately the judge can say, no way. And with Brian Kohlberger's case and the latest developments and the twists and turns with this case. Who knows though? Who knows? What do you think? So basically, Brian Kohlberger still maintains his innocent, but knows the prosecution has enough evidence to convict him. So you make a pl offered plea, similar to a no contest plea. Now, some of you guys might say, no way. But does the prosecution want to prevent all these witnesses from going on the stand? having a long dragged out trial that cost a lot of money, putting, uh, you know, the genealogy DNA testing process up on the stand to be questioned and analyzed by Brian Kohlberger's defense. Alfred plea, drop the DP 
Is that possible? Maybe. But it does give you that option in Idaho. A lot of states have it. Some states it's banned. But it's it's the same as a no contest plea. How would the victim's family feel if the prosecution goes that route? Um, you know, any scenario is possible for a reason to have an Alfred plea, but it's definitely possible under the Idaho court rules. Guilty, not guilty, Alfred plea. Now, some people are saying, what about not guilty by reason of, of insanity? They don't have that in Idaho. So there's really like three options here. Or Brian Kohlberger found not competent and then the proceedings stay indefinitely. That's also a route, but it looks like he is competent. And I haven't heard any suggestions or seen anything about Ann Taylor going that route. Not guilty, guilty Alfred plea. What's your thoughts on the Alfred plea? Do you know any information about the Alfred plea? Subscribe to my channel, like, hit the notification button. Every scenario moving forward, we are analyzing and dissecting what path is Brian Kohlberger going to take with this case now that it's been past the indict, you know, past the arraignment of the indictment stages? Will his lawyers file a motion to suppress evidence, uh, dismiss indictment before trial? Remains to be seen. Change of venue, change of you know, judge recusal. What's your thoughts? We'll talk soon. Stay tuned.